Since its beginning, media has been a one-way street. With all the traffic coming at us and flashing graphics like some fire hose of information from which whole generations drank daily. And then came the internet, allowing the audience to interact with the content they view or even to produce their own. And in this ever-stepping manner of creation, we find ourselves in a new path, a place where you, the viewer, can determine the direction of our travel, a place we call Random Acts of Awareness. Social media is a topic for today. Hello, I'm Paul V. Harris, author of Living Your Destiny, how to get everything you want faster than you ever dreamed possible. Social media, what does it do to the world? My favorite thing about Twitter is seeing people's response in real time. You know, everyone thinks that they're alone here, that they're the only ones thinking these thoughts. When you post something and see hundreds of people respond, it shows you that no one's really alone. Social media is an amazing thing. It really is. It's an amazing thing because we have control over the content. Social media affect the world. Like anything, social media can be seen as something that serves the greater good or something that disconnects, dismantles, separates. Let's have a look at, say, something like YouTube. People now are making videos, personal videos of themselves, which are connecting with people all over the planet and are, and are shining light on people's minds. Social media connect people who are on the same plane, even if they're not in the same geographic place. Notice how you find people on the same plane who are interested in the same things you are, even if they don't live near you. Could social media be a stepping stone to telepathy? Some people feel that's the case. What do you use social media for? Attention. What kind of attention? What's Just like whenever I'm bored or if I want to... Well, yeah, I guess when I'm bored I just go harass people online. How I use Facebook. Now, I want to cover the pros and cons of social media. Now, I'll start with the pros. What do we have in social media? We have YouTube, Facebook, Twitter, LinkedIn, etc., etc. There's so many options out there in social media. Now, a lot of people say, is this a good thing or a bad thing for humanity? Well, I'll cover the pros first. So, uh, the good side of it. Obviously, it is like the physical manifestation of the global mind, so to speak. Because we have different electromagnetic pulses of the brain almost, um, reacting with each other from all sides of the globe. So, like, say 20 years ago, someone in Mongolia may not have had any contemplation of what life was, in, what life was like in Sierra Leone in Africa. But now they do. That's all at the fingertips of the computer now, with social media, internet, etc. It used to be, only a short few years ago, that only corporations had the ability to syndicate uh, shows such as this. Now, through social media, the people have the ability to, self, to syndicate what they see as valuable. It's, the media is no longer selected for them to view they will actually select the media that they view and they will choose which media they're willing to share. 
the more people who are willing to share any given form of media, uh, that is self-syndication. For instance, if a thousand of you that watch this would embed the Random Acts of Awareness player on your website, on your blog, on your Facebook pages, that would self-syndicate the show to a broader audience than any network could imagine. There's nobody standing behind you. You know, there's no big government or there's no censor. There's nobody to tell me not to say something. And the greatest thing about social media is that we have total control over what we do. And of course, this all comes from the bottom up meaning people will decide what they're willing to share, what they want to syndicate and broadcast, uh, rebroadcast out the messages and memes they see value in, rather than the handful selecting which ones the masses will see. Now the masses have become creators. But it is a social media aspect of the internet which has become so big. Why? Because a lot of information now is being passed from people from person to person on all sides of the planet. Now the pros of it is because a lot of this information is it is enlightening people up to and opening their minds to different possibilities in this world. Like say for instance in the last six years we've had films such as Loose Change, Zeitgeist, Climatica, etc which have opened up a lot of avenues for people to explore, say, if 9-11 was an inside job, who's running the monetary system, or what is reality, what is consciousness, and stuff like that. For myself personally, as an author, it's great for me because I've become aware of a lot more books out there globally that you would not get at your average bookstore. So that's another good thing for me on a personal level. But the social media aspect is, is great because people are connecting with each other, which is important. Um, we are seeing that collectiveness, that unity, so to speak, that we've always felt but never experienced, which is slowly happening at the moment in this world through social media. It's one of the greatest things about uh, this, this video. You know, this video is about awareness. It's about bringing awareness to the people, and, and it's totally controlled by the people watching it. You know, we get to choose what the content is. We get to choose who's in the content, who's on the video. Anybody can be on social media and say anything they want. I personally am interested in inspiring people to be all they can be. You know, they call me Dr. Inspiration. You can find me at drinspiration.com. One of the most powerful forms of social media that I've seen so far is YouTube. The ability for any of us to take a camera and show the rest of the world glimpses and unique perspectives into our own lives, our own point of views, that is very powerful because one of the things I see happening in, in social media is it, it's a reflection of our world mind. We are in a constant state of real-time communication, just like cells in the body. And the more the cells in a body can communicate with each other and share information, the healthier that organism is going to be. Imagine our subconscious mind as a living organism and social media being a reflection of the thoughts that we're throwing into the pond in real time. When I throw out a tweet, an idea, a concept, and it affects other people. It touches other thinkers in the pond, and it's gonna affect the size and shape and direction that they throw their own rocks. This is happening with everyone in real time, and social media is allowing us to exchange this information in a way that was never permitted before. Through the magic of social media, today we're here. This marvelous place on Phillip Island is where we've been involved in an event. Through Facebook, we found out about this particular event. We connected with people we hadn't met in person. This weekend we came. 
We met these people. We've been having a wonderful time. Social media enable you to connect with kindred spirits, with people interested in those things that you're interested in. It invites you to broaden your horizons, go to new places. You don't have to always exist in cyberspace, but it can be a stepping stone for so much more. There can be some downsides to this with how people use the social media, as in, you know, there's a lot of games on Facebook and stuff like that, which I don't know, like, for, for myself, I, I believe it, it's almost insulting people's intelligence, but each to their own. I just talked to one girl off camera, and she said the reason she doesn't care about social media is because she's just not that social. <laughs> it's brilliant. Some people said social media actually make people feel more disconnected, more divided, more separated. Ever notice how people who are communicating on computers or iPhones and, and other gadgets are communicating more in cyberspace and unseen worlds than they are in physical reality? But could this also not be a way to get in touch with yourself, the unseen worlds, all those aspects of yourself that you've temporarily forgotten? I appreciate the response. I appreciate being able to broadcast my messages and in real time see the world mind's response to it, whether or not it be favorable or, uh, or to the contrary. But it's great to see people's response immediately to the words you're writing. When I used to sit and just write poetry, a lot of the things that I post on Twitter are coming from my thought patterns as a poet. The same stuff I would sit down and write on a napkin by myself Rather than doing that, now I'm typing it in real time and sharing it uh, with everyone listening. And it's great to be able to see how people respond to a living poem. All of a sudden, social media already is larger than mass media. Social media already is truth. We already tell the truth on a daily basis. You know, we don't skew our beliefs. You know, the mass media is all about programming. It's all about getting you to do what they want you to do. Getting you to vote the way they want you to vote. Getting you to buy what they want you to buy. Getting you to act the way they think you should act. What's wrong with what you think? See, that's the greatest thing about social media. Social media can be used for business. It can be used for for inspiration. It can be used to, to just say what's on your mind. One of my favorite aspects of social media is that it gives, a, gives people a, the voice that only corporations have had. It gives individuals the ability to spread their ideas and their memes around the world. Jessica Gudger. Was it Jessica? Gudger. And what do you think of social media? Or what do you use social media for? Attention. What kind of attention? What's Just like whenever I'm bored or if I want to... Well, yeah, I guess when I'm bored I just go harass people online. How I use Facebook. <laughs> My name is Rilan Tosil. <laughs> and you're from Yakima? Yes. <laughs> and what do, you, what do you use social media for? I own a boutique store, so I use it for social networking. Have and, you seen... And, and, and like advertising my store. What's your store? It's called Rolo's Boutique. Well, I do like fashion shows and promos. So a lot of people that's in the fashion and the modeling, they always respond to it because they like the pictures I have or the models I have up or the, most of all, they like the clothing I have in my store. So it's really good for me, basically. It lets, it lets people get my character out there and let people know who I am as a person and as a business. Do you think people are spending too much time on social media? It's up, you know, everyone's different, it's up to them to how long they want to spend their time. I, I put pretty much time on my on social media too just because of my store and all, but you know, once my store's closed, I'm not really on it as much. But it's been a good tool for me. She's um, also a dang good model too, so she wasn't getting oh, that part of it. Is this one of your models? Hey, there you <laughs> go. Not yet. Not yet. <laughs> He's <model>. working. <laughs> but she's done a promo, and that's how I kind of saw, I saw some of her promo pics, and you know, so that's how I kind of 
saw her and met her through things. So it kind of worked out too. Also. Another, uh, that's a good point about social media is many yeah. people are meeting. I meeting. mean, uh, people In that you would have never, exactly, never, yeah, that you would have never, never got to meet imagined. before. Like uh, I met mean, celebrities, I mean, I meet people in high places, celebrities and different people that's in the same industry as me so it's awesome for me excellent excellent see yeah, it's a good start any of those any of you out there looking for models your name again jessica <laughs> look at jessica. jessica i'd love to model for you there you go some people use social media to disconnect from the world to become engrossed in something other than where they are physically i use social media to reach out and connect with the world <laughs> to meet people, to set up opportunities. But more and more, I'm recognizing that what I do has very little to do with what unfolds. Why do I say this? Because everything is unfolding without us. And regardless of what we do, what we don't do, things are happening. Now, what is it that you're doing in your life to inspire others? It's the greatest thing about social media. What if, what if every, punch of, every person watching this video posted it on their blog? I want to step into the cons of it because um, a lot of people do say, yes, you know, the internet is a great thing and they stand by that 100%. They stand by social media 100%. But I see a few things happening in the world. It's almost like when, t when television came in, I don't know now, 60, 70 years ago, people said it was going to be used moderately. It would, be, it would just be a, a, you know, a device to educate and so forth. But what you see now is, I don't know t television personally, but what I've seen in the past is a lot of dribble. Um, so what I see now is because social media and the internet has become such a large thing for people to be educated and to become friends with each other, it, people are, are, are depending on and people are defending this source of communication. This, is, this ties us into the cons. Um, First of all, you need to realize if you depend on anything in your life, any little thing, you are not free. Now, that's a hard realization for a lot of people to think about because if that means that even if you depend on a certain person in your life, that very dependence is blocking your freedom. So what we have now is we have social media, internet, where people are defending and are dependent on that. Now, that's, the, that's a big problem. Because ask yourself, when's the last time you went and sat with a tree? People might think, that's crazy. Why would I sit with a tree? But just, why wouldn't you sit with a tree? And the problem would be is because if you were to go and sit with the tree, it would be within one minute where your mind would be telling you to go back to the social media, go back to Facebook, go back to YouTube, start uploading videos, fill the mind, fill it with you know, more entertainment or even so knowledge, like fill it with knowledge just to even just keep your mind stimulated. Don't rest. That's what would happen if you sat with a tree. Now I see that as a, pro as a problem. This kind of stems into a lot of things with technology because even though technology has enhanced our world a lot, definitely, it can hinder us with our dependence on it. It's funny, you can become engrossed in social media, can't you? You can become so involved that aspects of your physical life seem to disappear. It's, it's like when people were to look, say, at a yogi or a person in Wall Street with their iPhone and their, their laptop and everything there. Who's more destructive in the world? The yogi who is praying to the spirit on top of the mountain? Or the guy in Wall Street who has an iPhone? a laptop, a money suit, and so forth. Hey, without social media, we would have never met. You know, some of the most funniest things I've ever seen have been on social media. You know, there, there's this kid that thinks outside the box, 
and I know you know who he is. He's a young kid. He talks about his meds all the time. And I'm not going to say what his name is because I'm sure you know who he is. He's hilarious. This kid thought outside the box, started putting up his videos, having fun with it, and next thing you know, he's figured out a way to create revenue behind this crazy idea of him just being who he is. I think that's the greatest thing about social media is all we have to be is who we are. Just be honest. Be true. And the truth shall prevail. That's not the, the worst thing about social media and internet and technology. It's just the capacity for it to be a dependence and to keep you blind from who you truly are. Because within it, you're not going to find freedom within social media. You will find, of course, you'll find a lot of friends, um, which is great to connect with each other and to find like minds. You know, for myself, even personally, I've found so many great people through social media, so I'm not condemning it. I'm just saying maybe we need to reevaluate our situation on depending on it. Because if I cannot go one month without the internet, one month without social media, then I've got a problem. Because that ultimately that means that I am choosing salvation still without and not within. I'm looking to my other brothers and sisters to fill that empty void in my life. You can savor wherever you are. Make the most of it. Make the most of the relationships you have, those you forge through different social media. Everything is an invitation to savor who you are, savor all this world has to offer. You know, today I was listening to a radio show on the internet that is unedited and uncontrolled by the mass media. And this guy, Kevin Trudeau, taught, tells the truth. He tells the truth as he sees it. And, and he has been attacked and attacked and attacked and attacked by the mass media by the law, by, by social or mass media's idea of what the law is. And he's still telling the truth. You know, we should be inspired by somebody who's willing to be attacked and willing to tell the truth anyway, even when he knows he's going to be attacked by it. He knows that the, the powers that be are going to do whatever they can to shut him up. Because they don't want you to know the truth. It's the greatest thing about social media. There's no one there to shut us up. I'm going to tell the truth. I'm going to tell the truth always. I'm going to tell the truth as I see it. And it's up to you to let me know if you like it or not. It's the coolest thing about social media. If you don't like it, don't watch it. And we know you're going to love it. We know that you want this content. You want to be inspired. You want to be changed. Now, I don't, that doesn't mean I don't want any of you guys to stop using it. But just pose that question to yourself. Could you for one month give it all away? Give away all of the internet. Give away all of the social media aspect of your life. And just be for one month. Go back to reading books. Or just go back to meditation. Or go back to just communicating face to face with somebody else. Instead of hiding behind the veil of a computer and computing, to, and, uh, computing and communicating to somebody else. What are you doing with social media? How does social media affect your world? Do you feel as though you're part of a herd of cattle? <laughs> heard of cows? Or do you sense that social media is allowing you to break out of limitation, allowing you to discover not only new parts of yourself, but also to discover new worlds, new activities, new endeavors? Are you allowing it to inspire you 
to undertake projects or endeavors that you haven't tried before. Social media can be a wonderful tool if you choose to see it that way. Social media is an amazing thing and when you start putting videos up, when, when you are able to, to get in front of a camera and communicate with the masses on a level that you've never seen before, and you start to see comments at the bottom when, when people are saying, hey, I really like that video. Hey, can I use this content in my blog? Please do. Please, whatever, whatever I say that you like, use it. Use it to inspire others. Use it to change other people's lives. Because for me, this is all about making a difference in someone else's life. It's all about taking my experience, my, my life experience that I've learned over the last 42 years of my life, not just what to do, but also what not to do. Lord knows I've made a ton of mistakes in my life. And I've also had a lot of success. And, you know, success is really mastering the difficulties. You know, mastering the fear. Mastering and really never giving up. I will never give up. I will continue to tell the truth even when people don't like it. In conclusion, social media, Facebook, YouTube, Twitter, etc. Wonderful things. Definitely wonderful things. Wonderful devices of truth, but not truth. That's what we need to realize. These are only devices of truth. The message that is going through these devices may be the truth. It's not the social media aspect. It's the message that is being delivered from people to people, from all parts of the planet, that is the, is the truth. But usually what happens is we see the device as the truth. So... We really need to lower our dependence upon it and go back to where we believe that truth is coming from. Who is delivering the message through Twitter, through YouTube, through Facebook? It's not Facebook, it's not YouTube, it's not Twitter. It is you who is delivering the message. So. total is it good or bad it's not it's just a device and like any tool can be used uh, to create things or to tear things down in a lot of ways we're using social media to tear down things in society that we don't appreciate or that we don't see value in a lot of times social media is being used to insult criticize uh, throw stones and there's a lot of things in our world that, uh, that I think deserve to be criticized a lot of things need to change social media is a, an outlet a way for every person to have his or her voice heard amid the ever screaming crowd. Random acts of awareness is more than something you watch, and we ask you to get involved and help making this what you want to see. So what will next week's episode be? You decide. Leave your suggestions as a comment or tweet me at ICPChat. I'm Chad Lilly, and this has been a random act of awareness. Thanks for watching.